These are not just exposure settings. These are actually paint brushes for your camera. How's it going everyone? My name is Magic Turski and today I'll be talking to you about manual exposure and how you can make better decisions to creatively shape your image. So shutter speed, aperture and ISO, these are tools that will help you to creatively sculpt your image and evoke certain emotions. They control how you're gonna perceive the subject within the frame, their relationship to the environment and how the audience would actually perceive them. Every creative decision here, you're gonna pay for with the currency that is light. If you're working with unlimited budget and you have access to all the lights you want, then you're basically free to go to do whatever you want. But some of us might work on a limited budget and then it's important to understand what compromise you can do within the settings to not sacrifice the quality of your image. Our first tool is shutter speed, the control of time. Shutter speed impacts how the motion blur is gonna look in your image. Natural looking motion blur you can achieve with 180 degree angle. So that means you can achieve it with the setting of one over double the frame rate that you are shooting. So for 24 frames per second, the shutter speed would be one over two times 24, equaling one over 48 of a second. For 30 frames per second, one over two times 30 is gonna be one over 60. Shutter speed is expressed in fractions of a second, therefore, the higher the frame rate, faster the shutter speed, which means the sensor of your camera is exposed for less time to the light. So your image actually becomes darker. Frame rates over 50 frames per second, 60, 120, whatever your camera can film. Today, actually, phones even can do 240. If you want to keep natural looking motion there, you need to increase the shutter speed accordingly. This is why when you see videos filmed in super slow motion, many of these are filmed in extremely bright environments or outside because the sun is one of the brightest sources and it's also for free. So what are the ways you can be creative with shutter speed? If you increase the shutter speed for 24 frames per second, you'll minimize the amount of motion blur. And that might not necessarily look very pleasant, but if you're doing any VFX work and you might need to track something within the scene that has a lot of movement, minimizing motion blur can actually help you to keep the image sharper, therefore easier for your software later on to track. On the opposite end, if you slow down your shutter speed, you will increase the amount of motion blur in your image. Therefore, you might get a bit more dreamy or surreal look that kind of creates this like drunken vibe. Usually it's used for music videos or if character gets intoxicated or poisoned and you just need to show the fact that something is not right with them. The sensor is gonna be exposed to light for a longer time so your image will become brighter. You might use that to your advantage if you're filming anything within the environments that are very dark and there's not a lot of movement in them. Like if you're doing the city landscape and you don't see a lot of people running and you just basically wanna achieve better exposure but you, don't, you cannot really, you know, light up the whole city of some sort. Let's talk about aperture. Aperture defines how wide your lens opens and depending on your lens, it might be expressed in f-stops or t-stops, but basically the lower the f-stop, the wider it opens. It affects depth of field, meaning the range of your focus. So f2.8, for example, has shallow depth of field where the subject you're filming will be isolated from the background. At the beginning, if you get the lens that opens to 1.8 or 2.8, usually what people tend to do is just keep it like that because it does look cinematic, but you gotta understand what your scene requires. For example, if you're shooting a wider shot and you wanna showcase every layer of your scene, you might need to choose aperture like f9 so you get more things in focus but there is a trade-off the more things you want in focus the narrower the aperture so the less light comes in so your image becomes darker so basically the amount of things you want to get in focus you have to pay with light for that too and the last but not least is iso and there's a reason why i chose to talk about it at the very end it's because iso is a game control of your sensor and how sensitive it becomes to the light this setting all it does is makes the image brighter or darker but iso does not affect the physical optics of your camera it's an equivalent of digital boost of exposure to the image. So higher ISO will introduce some noise to your image, especially dark scenes within the shadows, you might notice much more noise. This is why it's important to understand the aperture and shutter speed first, because they affect the exposure of your image in actual physical way. But the ISO is better to use as a last resort. If you cannot, for example, introduce more light to your scene by using additional sources of light, then you might need to boost up the ISO, but that might mean that you kind of sacrifice the quality of the image. I hope this made it clear for you and it will help you to have better control over your image in the future. Obviously, 
Dark scenes are not the only issue we are dealing with. Sometimes you might have too much light and for these problems you might need to use filters. And if you want to learn more about that, just check out my next video. That's everything for me today. All the best to you guys. See you soon.